Uh, so, do we have suggestions for the next couple of games? All right. Um, unless you need to do it to avoid losing material, your E pawn will be the last pawn to move. And move the A and H pawns on the first two moves. Okay, I'm guessing that's in two separate games. That's, yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Game number one, I'm going to attempt to move the pawn on E2 last out of all of my pawns. Unless I need to move it in order to, you know, for the game not to be completely ridiculous. Okay, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, I think D4, F4 is a good start. Uh, of course, I could just try and end the game without having to move the E pawn. But, uh... Okay, right, so we're going to play E3 here. No, only joking, we're going to go C3. Okay, and then in the next game, I have to move the A and the H pawn. Uh, I'll clarify that after this game. Okay. How, how best to do this? Okay, so I've gone for D4, F4 very early on here. Because uh, it gives me a way of clamping down on the center. Which means that uh, there shouldn't be anything really nasty that my opponent can do to me that's going to require me to move this pawn. And my opponent's having a long old think here. Uni 1, 2, 3 is probably thinking, well, normally people go E3 around about here. But, you know, he probably thinks I've got some really clever idea. But, by not going E3, I can go Bishop E3. <laughs> which allows me to get that little bit more control of the centre. And now... Uh, my temptation is reduced somewhat. Of course, I might need to recapture on f3 with the pawn, but for the moment, I've got g takes f3, so it's not the end of the world. So, unlike John, I'm going to attempt to uh, succeed in this challenge by planning ahead so that I don't get myself in an opportunity where I need to move that e-pawn too early on. Okay, I do need to continue to make pawn moves at reasonable opportunities. So h3 planning g4 would be a good idea. My opponent goes h5 to prevent that, but that allows me to go g3 at relatively little cost. And then we see bishop b4, and I go a3 to hit the bishop, and if he takes on c3, then I've already fulfilled my requirements of moving all the pawns. And if he goes bishop a5, I can go b4, and I've already fulfilled the requirements of moving all the pawns. So... Hallelujah. That's that part of the game done. Let's check to see if we've got a lost possession. Uh, what are we? 11 moves in, guys. 11 moves, I would like to say. And 7 of my pawns have moved, but not this pawn on E2. That one is still at home. And, you know, so if we get any more whining from John about, oh, this is a bit too difficult, then, you know. Uh, having said that, I might be losing a pawn here. Let me have a think. I can go queen b3, then knight takes g3, and knight takes f1. That's not good. What about rook g1, knight takes c3, queen b3? That's a lot better. Because then I hit the knight on c3 and the pawn on b7. Ah, that's all fine. That's all fine. And look, I'm even ready to push this pawn a little bit further down the board with g4. Um, okay, takes queen b3. If queen goes to a5, that looks very dangerous, but bishop back to d2 would get my opponent in a really nasty pin there. So I think he's going to have to move back to e4 with his knight, and then I'm going to snaffle this pawn on b7 and say, thank you very much, uh, I am not a pawn down. Uh, I'm not certain if that's something necessarily to celebrate. Um... Ooh, knight e4, queen takes b7, queen a5, knight d2, knight takes e2, bishop takes. I think I'm still okay. But it is a bit hairy. Okay, well, my opponent wants to swap the queens off. Uh, I don't want to swap the queens off. Let's go back. I know that I am allowed to swap the queens off, but, you know, just in the name of entertainment, I'm going to keep them on. Because this show isn't really about teaching you how to gain lots of rating points. I'm sorry, if, you, if you've if you been tuning in for the last 20 weeks, 
trying to learn how to become an international master. I think we might have misled you a little bit because uh, that's this isn't how you do it necessarily. I mean, ninety five. Uh, ni- why would you shout out an actual good move, John? Sorry. I mean, the the one time, you know, like, you can't accept help from people. It's just, and you know, John does count as a per. I mean, John does count as help. Yay! Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's looking really difficult for me to find a way to win this game uh, before my opponent loses on time. Uh, so I'm going to desperately find a, try and find a way to attack G7, which has forced me to swap the uh, the queens off. But I promise you, it was an attacking swap of the queens. Um, oh, I just need some final trick. I'm trying to hit g7 very quickly. Well, I'm going to end up picking up the rook. And now swing this rook across. And uh, I think it's just fitting that at the end of this game, the pawn on e2, which has been neglected for so long, for 30 moves, hasn't had a chance to move. Am I going to get to play e4 and force my opponent to lose on time? No, he's pre-moved his knight away. He saw that one coming. But I don't think it's going to be enough to save my opponent in the long run. As he does, in fact, lose on time. I think getting these two pawns in the centre of the board was enough to finally tip the balance. And, uh, yeah. So, good game to my opponent there. And that was the first game of the match. So, we will go into the rematch. And then, just a reminder, it was uh, A pawn and H pawn... And my first two pawns to move. But I can move other pieces. Moves one and two. Moves one and two are a pawn and each pawn. Okay, I don't think that loses by force against anything. Uh, does my opponent want a rematch? It's not looking like it at the moment. Okay, yep, he's gone for it. Okay, well, I guess the question is which one first? I guess the H pawn. And then the A pawn. I think I'm going to go for like a delayed St. George's attack with a6 and b5 and try and use this h-pawn later on to batter down my opponent's uh, kingside. Well, okay, I can't really go b5. Or can I? Okay, let's offer this as a pawn sack. Now, takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. I'm wondering if I can try and get c5 in early on. To take advantage of where his bishop's going to be. I don't know. I'm starting to worry that my opponent might not be taking me seriously at this point of the game. But uh, such worries are something that uh, I shouldn't really concern myself with. Let's, should I develop a bishop first here? Or should I carry on moving pawns? Hmm. Well, I suppose I should fear in Chateau. Put this bishop on g7. And then go c5. Um, try and undermine my opponent's centre. Obviously one of the big problems with moving your h-pawn and your a-pawn on the first two moves is you do give your opponent a rather large control of the centre early on. So I'm going to need to play c5 later on if I'm going to need if I'm going to get some control back in the centre of the board. My opponent simply castles. So I'll push that h-pawn again. I'm expecting h3. But I don't really have a plan just yet. So I'm going to continue to develop some more pieces. Maybe bishop g5 is a bit annoying here. Uh, okay, d5. Well, that allows me to develop again. Mm, I'm not convinced, though, that I've obtained full compensation for the pawn. I don't know. I do have this pawn on h4. Which could be valued as worth uh, two pawns, but um, but probably not by anyone sane. So, uh, so yeah, we have a position, and uh, that's about all we can say for the moment. Uh, what I would like to follow up this position with is some kind of plan. Now, I wanted to go c5 and undermine his pawn centre, but his pawn centre's kind of been exchanged off 
for like my king's safety and general peace of mind. But maybe if I continue developing pieces, some kind of plan will present itself. Uh, by the way, uh, I think we're going to make this the penultimate series. We're going to go for one more two-game mini-match of three-minute chess after this. And then maybe maybe John will uh, pop in for another couple of games, maybe not, depending on how he's feeling. Um, I, 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 he gave me a look which basically says, yeah, he will, you know, because... He's not happy with winning games on time. He Basically, he just gave me a look which said, I'm not happy with how I played. What I want to do, Tom, is come back on and win some games in entertaining fashion. And I think I would be cruel not if, it was, if I was going to deny him that opportunity. So, so yeah. Uh, I'm a bit worried that my position is rubbish. Um, that pawn on h4... That was worth at least two pawns, possibly three, um, is now being taken off, um, and uh, I suppose the advantage of that is it's one less weakness for me to defend. So my opponent probably overlooked that, um, and uh, if I can find a creative way to sack another weakness or two, then I think my opponent's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna confidently state that uh, that I'm still gonna win this game, and uh, ignore the fact that the only way that's possible is because my opponent's drifted down to 41 seconds on the clock. No, okay, I really don't like e4 because this bishop on b7, which has been languishing uh, in irrelevance for large parts of this game, suddenly sees this a8. To h1 diagonal and says, ah, "This looks, this looks like something that I could work with." So suddenly I've got lots of tactics based on knight takes e5, hitting f2 and g2. Let's see if there's some way I can make this work. Well, this knight isn't in the best place for it to work yet. Maybe I can go d6 and sacrifice another pawn, and then knight d4. This is going to be my big stand. Look at the activity of my pieces. Bishop open line, bishop open line, knights in the centre, rooks and queen all on the f-file. Obviously this has all been made possible by the fact that I don't care about any of my pawns, but, uh, you know, that, wh what are pawns for? They're just in the way of our pieces. And now, I think I can bring in my rook to f3. Happy to give that up, because if he takes it off, then the bishop goes over here. Queen to f1. Ooh. And can you guys spot the mate in one? You've got 15 seconds. He's in a lot of trouble here. Que he's trying to swap the queens off, but what is black's mate in one? He there should be just about enough time to type it into Twitch chat. I'm down to five seconds. Four, three, two. Hopefully I don't disconnect. Rook takes h3 as mate. <laughs> And there we go, 1.1 seconds. I could have tried to get it at 0.1, but I think that is cutting it fine enough. And that bishop on b7, you remember we were talking about it with that pawn on e4. We were saying, that pawn should not have gone forward. Look at that bishop on g7, relishing a new existence, a new lease of life, hitting that pawn on g2. And who's the star of the show at the end? It's that bishop on b7. So there we go.